everyone. Welcome to our podcast. If you'd like more information about our church, you can visit www.r4sq.org. Okay, enjoy the podcast. I want to welcome our first time guests for joining uh, who are here with us today. Thank you for joining us, as well as our live audience. Yes. As well as our, our live audience that are, that are viewing um, um, via live stream of Facebook. Welcome to Restoration Church. Hope you have been blessed by uh, you joining us today. It's one thing to watch online. It's another thing to be here to experience the presence of God like, like we so experienced this morning. And I can tell you this. God has set you up in a good way. Amen? Don't take that as a negative statement. Because as I listened to what was being done, I watched the atmosphere, listened to the songs that were singing, listened to the word that came forth this morning, I thought, God, you have really connected the dots this morning, so I think my job is relatively easy as far as sharing the word. But I do encourage you to listen intently this morning, because we're starting a new series today on spiritual warfare. And... uh, I'm excited about this, this particular series. And uh, so, if you will, you can turn to 2 Kings chapter 6. We're going to read from that particular passage in just a moment, but go on and turn there, mark the spot. 2 Kings sec, uh, chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. And Pastor Angela, since I will be reading a little bit further down in my message, Thank you. You may be seated. Yes. Second Kings chapter 6. We're going to read there in just a moment. So we're starting this series on spiritual warfare. And the title of this series is Powerful Church Arising. Powerful Church Arising. And the title of the the message today is, See, Believe, Do. Will you say that with me? See, Believe, believe, and Do. And what we want to do with these messages is we want to glorify God. So often you hear messages on spiritual warfare, and and, and the focus is on the negative. The focus is on the the darkness. And and we we want to flip the script because I believe that, 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 when, we, when we, we focus on the positive things of God, that it changes our mindset concerning spiritual warfare. I do not want to glorify the devil in these messages. Amen? I want to glorify God. Amen. You know, over the past several weeks or so, there's been an anticipation that God is about to do something significant. It's been something that we have been sensing and feeling. Many of you have, have, have shared with me that you, you feel or, or you sense that there's a change in the atmosphere. You sense. And boy, if you didn't feel it this morning, you must be dead. <laughs> but you sense there's a stirring in the spirit realm, that God is stirring something up. You sense that there's a move of the Holy Spirit that is going to create a powerful uprising by the church as God unleashes his power, his presence, and his authority against the forces of hell in ways that many of you have never seen, in ways that are unprecedented to many people in the church. This powerful church that is rising, is advancing, And we'll continue to advance as members of the body of Christ stand up and take their rightful place amongst an evil and perverse generation. But do not mistake the sins of the people as the reason for the conditions of the world. This world is in the shape it is in because of the influence of evil. Evil that is working in the unseen world, creating turmoil and strife among men. Evil that do things in the spirit realm that causes a reaction in the natural. Evil 
that is being directed by the God of this age against the body of Christ. But listen, you've got to know that God, our God, the God who's all-powerful, the God who's all-knowing, the God who's always with us, is not sitting, sitting idly by watching what's happening like a spectator would look at a, at, a, at a movie. Our God is not sitting idly by, but he's raising up a people that is moving in his authority against the evil one and his regime. There is, church, a powerful church arising. You've got to know that. You've got to believe that. But listen, most important, you've got to say, I'm going to be a part of that. I'm going to be a part of that. Just like God is not sitting idly by watching, you should not either. You cannot sit idly by and watch. You must get involved in what God is doing. You must understand the authority that God's given you. You must believe in the power of God that resides in you. Stop sitting idly by doing nothing. There is a powerful church arising. Spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is the phenomenon whereby we, the physical earthly body of Christ, engages in war against the unseen spiritual forces of hell, the unseen spiritual forces of evil. And the very idea of such a conflict creates tension, even worry on behalf of some of the saints of God. Saints don't worry. Saints don't worry. But there are some obvious questions that we have concerning spiritual warfare. Questions such as, how can I effectively engage in war against forces that I cannot see. What assurance do I have that I can win these day-to-day -day battles against these forces of evil? And what role does God play in this day-to-day -day warfare against these forces of darkness that I encounter? Now, most Christians believe that Jesus has already defeated the power of the darkness. We believe that, right? Do you believe that? If you believe that, Rachel, you be, if you believe Jesus has defeated the power of the darkness, we believe that. We believe that. Most believe that he's already provided for us victory over the enemies of our soul, that when we leave this world, because we have, in, we have, in, we have entrusted the, our soul to the Lord Jesus Christ, that we're going to go and spend eternity with God. We believe that. But what many fail to understand is how to personally engage in spiritual warfare. How do I do this? Well, over the next few weeks, we're going to provide answers that will equip you in your personal day-to-day -day battles against the forces of evil, starting with this message today, see, believe, do. See, believe, do. Let's start by looking at the concept of seeing as it pertains to spiritual warfare. What do I mean by see? To be effective in spiritual warfare, we must do what is written in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, where Paul said that we walk by faith, not by sight. To effectively engage in spiritual warfare, you must walk by faith and not by sight. But Pastor, you say I'm supposed to see. Yeah, I know. I'm going to get to that. Listen, what you see, how you see, what you perceive 
based on what you see, are very important to the results you will achieve as you engage in spiritual warfare. The sight that Paul is talking about is natural sight. You got to get that. He is saying we cannot win this battle by use of natural sight. But we are to by faith, listen to me, we are to by faith peer into the realm of the spirit to see and discern the activities that are taking place there. You cannot walk by what you see right here with your visual eyes, with your natural eyes. You've got to peer into the realm of the spirit and you've got to see the activities by faith that are taking place there. Let me give you a definition of faith as it applies to spiritual warfare. Faith is the ability to see into the spirit realm, understand what is happening, and then use the knowledge of what you see, what you discern, to defeat the evil that you're combating. I'm going to say that again. Faith is the ability to see into the spirit realm, understand what you see, understand what is happening based on what you see, use the knowledge of what you understand, what you discern, to defeat the evil that's coming against you. Second Corinthians, I'm sorry, Second Kings chapter 6. And I'm going to be reading from the Message Bible today because I really like the way the Message Bible puts this. And we're going to start our reading in verse 8. 2 Kings 6, verse 8. Listen to this. One time when the king of Aram was at war with Israel, after consulting with his officers, he said, at such and such a place, I want an ambush set. The holy man sent a message to the king of Israel saying, watch out when you're passing this place because Aram has set an ambush there. So the king of Israel sent word concerning the place to which the holy man had warned him. This kind of thing happened all the time. Let that sink in. The king of Aram was furious over all this. So he called his officers together and said, tell me, who is leaking information to the king of Israel? Who is the spy that's in our ranks? But one of his men said, no, my master, dear king, it's not any of us. It's Elisha the prophet who's in Israel. He tells the king of Israel everything, say everything. everything. How much he tells him? Everything. He tells the king of Israel, everything you say, even what you whisper in your bedroom. The king said, go and find out where he is. I'll send someone and capture him. The report came back. He's in Dothan. Then the king dispatched horses and chariots, an impressive fighting force. They came by night and they surrounded the city. Early in the morning, a servant of the holy man, Elijah's servant, got up and went out. Surprise, horses and chariots surrounded the city. The young man exclaimed, oh, master, what shall we do? Elijah said, Elisha said, don't worry about it. Don't worry. They're more on our side than on their side. But listen, he didn't stop there. Then Elijah prayed, oh God, open his eyes and let him what? Open his eyes and let him see. The eyes of the young man was open and he saw a wonder, a wonder that the whole mountainside full of horses and chariots of fire Surrounding Elisha. Listen to me. If you do not see that God is at work in your life, 
fighting for you against the powers of darkness, your faith is not working as it should. Your faith is not working. If you do not see the activities of God, something is wrong with your spiritual eyesight. There's nothing wrong with God. There's something wrong with you. Here's point number one. You must see the invisible. You must see the invisible. Seeing the invisible is important because we're fighting an enemy that cannot be seen with natural eyes. So how do we see the unseen? (laughs) We do it with eyes of faith. We ask the Lord to show us those unseen things that we battle. We also pray for God to open our eyes that we may see those who are with us battling the forces of evil. That's what Elijah did for his servant. He didn't ask God to simply show his servant another miracle. He asked God to let his servant see into another dimension. (laughs) He didn't ask the Lord, God, show him a miracle. Show him another miracle. He said, God, open his eyes. And let him see into a dimension that he cannot see with his natural eyes. That's faith. Looking with your spiritual eyes into a dimension that cannot be seen in the natural. Elijah's servant was no longer afraid when he saw God's army because faith reveals, listen, faith reveals that God is with us. If your faith doesn't reveal nothing else to you, it should reveal to you that God's with me. God's with me. Faith reveals that God is doing more for his people than we will ever see or realize with our natural sight. We walk by faith, not by natural sight. Seeing into the invisible, the, the invisible realm is key to victorious prayer. Seeing into the invisible realm is key to discerning spiritual issues from God's perspective. Seeing into the invisible realm is key to knowing the adversary's attack plan. How is he going to attack? What's he trying to do? Discerning, understanding, seeing into the invisible realm is key in knowing that God's army is with us at all times. When you face difficulties that seem unsurmountable, remember the spiritual resources of God are available to you even if you cannot see them. That's faith. (laughs) Got a little head scratching going on. Let me say that again. When you face difficulties that seem insurmountable, It just seemed like, I don't know. This, this is a big mountain to climb. When you face those things, you got to know that the spiritual resources of God are available to you even if you do not see them. That's faith. You have to look through the eyes of faith and see the resources of God. There is a powerful church arising. That church has the eyes of God and the fight of the Lion of Judah. 
There is a powerful church arising that has the gentle presence of the Holy Spirit, but also the powerful authority and power of the Holy Spirit that moves mountains. The powerful church that is arising, it peers into the unseen world with eyes of faith and successfully pressed past the evil that's trying to hold her back. We are that church. We are the bride of Christ who's been anointed by God to subdue evil and advance God's kingdom. Do you believe that? You are that church. That powerful church that is arising knows that God is omnipresent. That he's everywhere at all times. That church understands that we're never alone. But that God is with us always. David said this of the omnipresence of God in Psalm 139, 7 through 10. He said, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take up the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. God is omnipresent and because he is You're never alone as you battle the forces of evil. Never alone. Not only is God present in your battles, but so is his army of angels. Just as they surrounded Elijah and his servants, they surround us today. Do you believe that? I was sharing with someone a couple days ago uh, a vision I had four or five years ago. And Raj, I'm sure you'll remember this, but I had this vision that on this side of the building, there was this huge angel standing, watching guard over this facility. I believe God opened my eyes and let me look into the realm of the invisible to let me see that there are angels all around us. Why do you live in fear? Why do you live in dread? When the God of all power is for you and he has a powerful army that surrounds you, pray and ask God to open your eyes that you can see. Stop looking with your natural eyes. But start using your eyes of faith. Ask the Lord to open your eyes that you may see the invisible. We walk by faith. The ability to peer into the unseen world, not by sight, what we see with our natural eyes. That brings us to point number two, which is this. Believe the unimaginable. Ooh, Jesus. Believe the unimaginable. Say that with me. Believe the unimaginable. We limit the activities of God when we fail to take him at his word. We limit the activities of God when we fail to take him at his word. And the reason many of us won't take God at his word is we find it hard to believe. We can't imagine that. It's unimaginable. (laughs) Your mind has difficulty believing things that are beyond your own ability to do. Our mindset is often, if something is impossible for me to do, I just don't believe it's going to happen. That type of thinking flies in the face of God because Jesus said in Luke 18 27 the things which are impossible with men are possible with God 
So don't look at what you, what you can do. Don't look at what your possible, what your possibilities are. But look and listen, understand God is, there's nothing that is impossible with God. Nothing. I want to share my most recent revelation about my inadequacies and God's awesomeness. It occurred when God spoke to, to me these words. He said, son, return to the place of trusting in my grace again. Return to the place of trusting in my grace. God reminded me that I let my faith in his grace slip. I'd come to the place in my life where I was trusting too much in me. I was trusting too much in my knowledge. I was trusting too much in my ability to fix problems instead of simply trusting in God's grace. So he said, return to the place of trusting in my grace because you wandered away from that. As we engage in spiritual warfare, we must trust in God's grace more than we trust in self. And that's point number three. Trust in God's grace more than you trust in self. That starts with, listen, that starts with believing the unimaginable. If you can think it, God can do it. If you can dream it up, God can bring it to pass. In spiritual warfare, you have to believe the unimaginable. Believe that God is going to do the impossible for you. In our text today, we see the king of Aram. He thought one of his officers was a traitor. He asked him, who has been informing the king of Israel of my plans? Everything I plot against him, he finds out about. So one of you must be telling him what my strategy is. But one of his officers spoke up and said, it's not us, my lord, the king. But Elijah, the prophet in Israel, tells the king of Israel even the words you speak in the privacy of your bedroom. Things which are impossible with men are possible with God. I have no idea what my enemies are plotting against me, but guess what? My God knows. I have no idea what's being whispered in the spiritual realm about me, but guess what? My God knows. He hears. So the king said, go and find this man so I can send troops and seize him. And I don't believe it was just to shut the prophet up. I believe the king also wanted to know, how is this possible? How can a man know what I'm saying in my bedroom? It is possible, church, because God is omnipresent, but he's also omniscient, which means he is the God of all knowledge. He's all-knowing. There is nothing that is unknown to our God, not even the plots and plans of the forces of hell. God knows what their plots and plans are. 
God is well aware of what is being planned against you and what is being planned against his church. God is well aware of the plots to deceive you, to depress you, and to possibly destroy you. There is nothing that can be said or even thought by the powers of evil that God does not know. Nothing. Nothing. And he personally intercedes for, and he personally interacts with the church to help us win these day-to-day battles that we engage in. So how do we win these day-to-day battles? By God personally engaging with us and by God personally interceding for us. As a matter of fact, I'm convinced that God protects us far more than we are aware of. I'm convinced that there are things that are plotted and planned against us every day that we never encounter. Because God spoils the plans of the enemy. And you, you, and listen, and we never know it. We never know it. We just go on about our life, just lucky, go happy, not even giving God praise and glory for the good things. Huh? Let these truths comfort you. Number one, God spars many plans of Satan that you never know about. That's the truth I'm convinced of. My faith tells me that. I'm walking by faith, not by sight. I don't have to see it to believe it. I believe it because I know my God. Amen. Number two, God's army never stops fighting for you. Yeah. Yeah. You got to know that you got the angels of, of, of heaven on your side. Warring spirits fighting on your behalf. And number three, God will give you insight into the plan attacks of evil because he is aware of their strategies. You don't have to be caught off guard, but you got to seek God that you may know and see and understand. Believe the unimaginable. Have great faith in God's promises. He has great things in store for you. He is the one who can and will do impossible things on your behalf. Remember Steve's word this morning? Put up 1 Corinthians 2.9. Then my text. It's what the scriptures mean when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, And no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. And I promise you, he didn't see my notes this morning. People don't know what I'm going to preach. My wife doesn't even know what I'm going to preach. God set you up because God wants you to know that he's in control. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Look at Ephesians 3.20. They're going to put that up for you. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think or imagine according to the power that works in us. Will you dare to believe the unimaginable? Will you dare to let your mind dream of things that you would not before? Will you allow the Holy Spirit to show you things that will blow your mind? If you will only believe, God will do it. Because nothing is impossible with God. That brings us to point number four. Do the impossible. Do the impossible. When you see the invisible, believe the unimaginable, you will do the impossible. But it will not be you who does it. 
but the power of God that works in you. Our natural man cannot defeat evil. It is impossible. But when we move out of the natural and meet with God in the realm of the spirit, all things become possible. 2 Kings 6.18 says, As the Aramean army advanced towards Elijah, or towards him, Elijah prayed. Oh, Lord, please make them blind. So the Lord struck them with blindness as Elijah had asked. God has the ability. Please hear me. God has the ability to take away the sight of your enemies. (laughs) God has the ability to take away the sight of your enemies. Think about what he did here. He opened the spiritual eyes of Elijah's servant and he saw into a dimension He'd never seen before, and he closed the natural eyes of Elijah's enemies. (laughs) God will let you see the enemy. But he will hide you. From the enemy's sight. Did I get too deep for you? (laughs) Dorothy, God will let you see the enemy, and at the same time, hide you from the enemy's sin. Got to believe the unimaginable. See, your mind's never gone there before. It is impossible. Think about this. It is impossible to effectively attack what you cannot see. How can the enemy defeat you if he can't see you? So listen, ask the Lord to hide you in his glory. (laughs) Ask the Lord to cover you with the blood of Jesus. Ask the Lord to take away the sight of the enemy. My last point, or tie all this together. See the invisible, believe the unimaginable, and you will do the impossible. See the invisible. Believe the unimaginable, and you will do the impossible. You do not have to live in fear of Satan. You do not have to live in dread or angst concerning your life. God is on your side. He fights for you, and he fights with you. Jesus has already stripped Satan of his power and authority. So do not give back to him what Jesus has taken away. Jesus has already stripped Satan of his power and authority. So do not give back to him what Jesus has taken away. 
Listen to these powerful words of Jesus found in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, as I close, as Jesus was commissioning his church. Listen to what he said. I have been given all authority. How much authority? All. Not some. I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. He said, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you and be sure of this. He said, be sure of this. I am with you always. Be sure of this. You got to be listening. He wants you to know that. Don't question it anymore. Don't, don't think that you're alone. Don't think that you're having to fight this by yourself. Jesus said, be sure of this. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. And the age he's talking about is the age we live in that's ruled by the God of this world. But Jesus said, you've got to know that I'm with you. I'm with you always. You'll never be alone. Because God is omnipresent. You'll never be in the dark because God is omniscient. And you're never without power because our God is omnipotent. How can we lose with this kind of God on our side? Stand to your feet this morning. Listen. We're going to take a few moments and we're going to pray. And I want you to pray. There's four prayer points we're going to put up this morning. Put those prayer points up today. This is what we're going to pray about. Pray that God will open our eyes. That we can see into the invisible realm. Pray for God to hide us in his glory so that the enemy cannot see us. Pray that we would believe the unimaginable and pray that we would begin to move out and do the impossible. We're going to get in our prayer circles and again as always, if you are uncomfortable, if, you want, if you're uncomfortable participating in a prayer circle, you do not have to. If you want to join with someone and let them pray, you're welcome to do that. But I want you to get in groups of three or four and begin to pray for these things this morning as we close. I'm done, but I want you to pray. Pray for God to open our eyes. Pray for God to hide us in his glory. Pray that we will believe the unimaginable and pray that we will begin to move out and do the impossible. Let's pray. Fervently pray, Saint. Hey, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed our podcast for today. If you would like to give us a praise report or request prayer for something, you can email us at amen at r4sq.org.